Good evening, everybody. My name is Austin, and I'm deeply honored and grateful to share my story with you. So in 2010, we had begun the journey to start a high-profile, very successful mobile advertising company. Now, before I get into the story about this business, I'd like to share with you a little bit of context. So I grew up in Ghana, um, in West Africa, to a dad who was both a politician and an um, entrepreneur. Growing up with him, I always heard the constant message about how successful entrepreneurs help strengthen communities, and that was something that he would love for his kids to do. Now in Ghana, a lot of the universities, or all the universities, are sponsored by the government. So what that means is, whenever the professors decide to go on strike, it creates a backlog of students. So by the time I finished high school, there was a backlog of three academic years before I went to university. And so my parents were very supportive of education and big, big believers in education. So they sponsored my exams, taking the SAT, and I applied to a few schools in the US. And Calvin College was the only Christian one. And being a good Catholic boy, I listened to my mom, and I came to Michigan and to Calvin College. So Calvin College started out a little rocky. What I mean by that is, as part of my application process, I was supposed to come work at the computer lab at Calvin. But when I got there, there were no spots left for me. So I began working in custodial services and spent a lot of my time working as a janitor. And then I caught a lucky break. I got a call from the computer lab, and a spot had opened up, and I could work there. So this was around 1998 around when the dot-com bubble was frothing and HTML and websites design were really taking off. And apparently, I had a knack for it. So I started designing websites for professors and for departments at Calvin. I was getting paid for it. And I thought, hey, this is really cool. I could carve a niche here. And so I kept doing that when I was at Calvin. So fast forward in 2009, I had just gotten married. Um, I had spent the last eight years working at Johnson Controls, and Johnson Controls had given me a green card, and I had given them eight years of my life, but I was getting ready to start uh, at an MBA program at Northwestern in, uh, in Chicago. And part of my application process was this very seed that my father had implanted in me. In my application essays, I said I was coming to learn about businesses and to start a high-growth business and positively impact my community. So I decided to start taking classes that piqued my interest. And one of those classes was focused on web startups. So in my class, I happened to be partnered with a group of four guys who I didn't know. And it turned out that something that we shared in common was that Living Social and Groupon were really fleecing small businesses. And we were going to stop it. So we went out into Evanston and started talking to city, city officials. We started talking to business owners, students, shoppers to try to find out what they liked and didn't like about the whole Groupon and discounting experience. Through that, we found our ideal customer. It wasn't the shoppers, it wasn't the business owners, but there was a role in the community and in many communities in Illinois that existed before these digital companies came out. And what their role was, was to advertise and market businesses within a specific downtown community. So that was awesome for us, because we had found our customer. And so with the class, we worked with this customer and developed an app for the city of Evanston, for the businesses in Evanston. And by the end of the first quarter, we had 100 businesses listed in the app. And we demoed it to city officials, to businesses, to much praise and, and um, success. Our customer talked to all her peers in Illinois, and they were all gung-ho about what we had built. By the end of the second quarter, we had over three businesses in the app, and things were looking really, really, really positive. Needless to say, we got an A in the class, and it was around graduation time. And I thought to myself, hey, this is why I came to business school, and I really, really want to continue this. So I gathered my team of three other people, so we're four in total, and I said, hey, guys, I think there's a future here, and I want to do this full time. Would you come join me? And to my astonishment, they all said yes. And all of them 
declined their full-time offers to go work for bigger companies to come on this journey with me. Now on the home front, um, we had to keep the lights on and the job that my wife Kim um, was employed at could barely help us sustain that. And so Kim and I had a discussion. I said, hey, you know, while I was at JCI, I tried to save as much as I could and I have $70,000 in my 401k account and I really believe in this company so I think we should use that to support us. Now, the rational brain in my head said, Austin, that is really stupid because you're losing out on compounding interest. Then the rational entrepreneur in my brain kicked in and said, well, your company is going to follow the typical hockey stick growth that Silicon Valley companies take and in five years, you would have sold the business and you would have made 800 grand. So this is a, a no-brainer. And so I convinced Kim, and you all probably know the answer to this by now, we dipped into the retirement savings account. In order to grow the business, we needed to raise a seed round. Um, so what that means is we needed to go out find some angel investors to help fuel the growth of the company. And that was my job. So we went out, raised about $110,000, and we had a team together, and we built an app. We built it, we actually finished all the features, and we were having a lot of success. We had about 1,000 businesses in the app at that point. Following this, we decided to apply to, and were accepted into the premier tech incubator in Chicago, 1871. And this was a really, really solid validation for our team because we were surrounded by a lot of successful entrepreneurs and a lot of successful high-growth startups. We were networking with people like Mike Evans, who founded Grubhub in Chicago, um, Sam Yegan, who was the CEO of OkCupid and Match.com, um, and a few other people. And they were really, really great in terms of inspiring us to move forward. So then we realized that in order for users to take full advantage of the apps that we were building, we needed an app that was specific for iPhone and an app that was specific for Android. So what that meant was, based on the amount of money that was coming in from our current customers, we needed to go out and raise a venture capital round of about a million dollars so we could hire a full-time iPhone developer and a full-time Android developer because those apps work differently. So that began my other journey of fundraising. I probably talked to over 15 venture capitalists. I was pitching constantly. Between that, I was going back and forth to Northwest University to share the story about how we had built a startup, to teach classes on that. So that was a very, very busy time in my life. Now talking to VCs and fundraising is one of the hardest things I've ever done in my life. And if you've worked with me, you know I can take a lot. But this was really, really tough. And I heard answers ranging from, why don't you come back to us in a few months when you've gained some more traction, to you guys are really trying to solve a market problem for a two-sided market. That's very difficult to scale, so sorry we can't do that. Other comment I heard, this was just one of them, was, you're black, you think you're gonna succeed at this? Another comment was, you're not good looking enough to be a CEO. <laughs> you name it, I heard it. So fast forward six months later, we still hadn't raised the venture round, and our funds were rapidly dwindling. Uh, at that point in time, we had about $30,000 in the bank, and two of my full-time employees needed to support their families, so they decided to take full-time offers. Um, but I dug in, and I really escalated my commitment to the idea of becoming a successful entrepreneur and bringing that into the community in which I live. And I was always thinking about my home country, Ghana. So what I did was I said, okay, we have $30,000, I'm gonna hire a developer. We're gonna change our strategy. We're gonna build one app that can serve both platforms and then when we come up with a new feature or fix a bug, we only have to do it once, and it works for all the apps. And the whole idea behind that was the app will be working just well enough to buy us enough time to fundraise. Boy, was I wrong. If you're an iPhone user and you're an Android user, you know that you like your phone platform for a specific reason. Now, there are several differences on both platforms that make it um, unique. But take, for example, a notification feature. When you get a notification or a text message, 
you get a banner that comes down from the top of your phone, and you get a little icon uh, on the app icon that counts up that says how many messages that uh, how many messages you've had. This decision to go with one platform completely changed all that. So as an example, when the Our app sent you a notification, you never saw a banner come from the top. You never saw a number increase on the icon. You had to open up the app, go onto your notifications tab, and then you'll see the messages in there. I'm a software developer, and I know that is a terrible user experience. And our end customers validated that. A lot of people stopped using our application. We saw our usage analytics go completely down. And other people started deleting the application. So that was the beginning of the end. Um, for about five months from that, we had two employees left. That was myself and um, a partner of mine. We had $5,000 left in the bank. And we had three suitors who literally wanted to pay us pennies on the, lot, uh, pennies on the dollar for our code base. So in May of 2013, um, I had about a quarter of my retirement savings left in my bank account. And I wrote a letter to our angel investors saying we're closing down the business. And I remember thinking to myself, maybe they were right all along. Maybe I am worthless. Thank you. <laughs>